Hello viewers, my name's Alan and welcome to my home workshop. Okay, well this is a quick project, a quick repair job. This is a piece from a toilet system. What happens is when you push the flush button, pushes down here, there's a pivot there, and it lifts the plunger that lets water out of the bottom. This one, you can see perhaps here, actually broke through here. Just broke into two pieces. And uh, I've done a repair with plastic glue and I don't have any faith that it's going to uh, not break again in exactly the same place. So I decided that what I needed to do um, was put on a couple of repair plates. These things always happen at Christmas, don't they, when you can't go and buy something or whatever. It's just so annoying. Anyway, so I've made a... perhaps it's just me that's unlucky. So I've made a couple of repair plates anyway. And my idea is to... Um, fix them onto here with a couple of pop rivets or four pop rivets I suppose to be exact and uh, hopefully the aluminium plates will make this whole thing a lot stronger I did think about sticking them on with epoxy and aerodite or something think about oh, surely that's strong enough without getting involved in all of that so let's uh, finish this job off I'm going to clamp this in the right place it was I had to bend the plate, of course, to make the shape. It's a 10 degree bend this way, and it's kilted, uh, tilted 10 degrees as well. It's a bit of a compound thing, but wasn't wasn't that difficult to um, but it wasn't that difficult to sort out. So I'm just going to use that to help locate this thing. I had to label them so I didn't get confused with uh, which way to bend it and so on. It's easy to do. Make two left-handed ones instead of a left hand and a right hand. I'm sure we've all been there. Right, so we'll put that on about there. Clamp that on. Love these tool maker clamps. They are just uh, just the bee's knees for this sort of job. I'm not a tool maker, but I certainly enjoy using tool maker clamps. They make life a lot easier. Just been using them actually on another repair job. A problem with the barbecue. Well, actually, it wasn't a repair job. I have a big issue at the here, which you may have seen from other videos, my videos, with possums. And uh, this particular problem is a possum got into my barbecue and decided that was a good place to make its home. Well, much as I don't like possums, I wasn't prepared to actually barbecue the little bugger, so I had to be evicted, and then make sure he couldn't get back in. Well, I didn't make a video of the work I did on the barbecue, but you can see the culprit here coming out of the barbecue. Yeah, put that on that way around, I think. Let's get that out of the way. The thing that makes these clamps so useful is because of the design, when you tighten them up you can change the angle at which the jaws close. And in this case, because the plastic has a, a moulding draft on it, um, the sides aren't parallel. So these little clamps are just brilliant for that. So just do a final check here. I think we might... So I used... Um, a six and a half millimeter drill just to make sure that I had the the cutout in here lined up with this pivot point but I think I have to just back this off a little bit I think I had it a bit too a bit too high and yeah, I think that might be a bit better just so that the bottom of this hole is not higher than the the plastic So just fiddle it forwards a touch. There we go, I think that's the go. Let's tighten the clamps up. Yes, yeah, so I'm happy with that. So I use my number 30 drill, correct size for a 1 8 inch pop rivet.
Come on. Might, might put that rivet in, or at least part one in the hole before I drill any more. Yes, that's going to be. I think that's going to be fine. I did think about um, setting these rivets with a washer on the back, but I think that that'll be okay. Actually, I'm not sure whether that rivet's quite long enough. Let's see if I've got a. Anyway, let's get my rivet gun out. Right. A rivet gun's a bit like a lathe, isn't it? Doesn't matter what you do with it, you've always, when you go to do the next job, you've got the wrong setup. You're on a three jaw when you're on a four jaw, or whatever. Oops. It's the same with the pop rivet, doesn't matter what you do with it, you always finish up with the wrong uh, nipple in there for the, the next job. My old friend Murphy, I suppose. Well, you went in anyway. Yeah, you volunteered. Right. Yeah, I don't think that's sticking out quite as much as would be nice. Do we can find one that's slightly longer? a pretty good assortment of these so there's a fair chance I'll find one that's uh, a little bit longer. I wanted to stick with aluminium I didn't really want to use stainless steel ones. Yeah, what about these guys? Let's see what they look like. Yeah I think that's a, I think that's a bit more of the ticket. So we're uh, yeah, I think we'll set that and then move on and do the rest. Oh, let's have a bigger shank, it doesn't want to go. Looks like Murphy got the last laugh there. Where did I put that little snare? I just couldn't see it for looking. Alright, we we'll go back to the back to the nipple that was actually in there, would you believe? Right, let's try that. So where did I put that? Yeah, there we go. And let's see how that works out. All right, so we've got, oops, we've got that all set to go. Hopefully this won't put so much pressure on it splits the plastic. Yeah, and that's exactly what it's done. I can see it see it splitting there. Well that wasn't such a clever idea, was it? Should have put a, a washer on the back after all. Uh, a bit of a head scratch now while I work out how to recover from this. Right, well I guess it's obvious that the the pressure to expand the rivet is what's actually split the plastic so I'm going to have to knock that out but I think I might uh, press ahead and try and put another one in anyway and this time put a, a washer under the head to um, stop that spreading pressure so this is a A stainless steel washer. See, let's just uh, clean the back of that off. So my hope is that putting the washer there is that when the pot rivet expands, the the washer will stop the spreading force that caused the split. Well, let's hope for the best. Oh. Yep, that was much more satisfactory. Yep, 
It looks like that's worked perfectly. That's what I should have done with the first one. Oh well. We live and learn, don't we? So let's get a one in here. This would be a bit more of a test because it's closer to the edge again. Actually, I'd like to get that shank out the way. I'd like to get that shank out the way. That doesn't interfere with the drill. Let's get this other hole, get this other hole in anyway. These little washers of stainless steel. Oh, and it's a little bit larger. Oh, so much the better. Just test it with a magnet, make sure it is stainless steel. Hmm. Maybe that one isn't. Well, this one's brass. Go with that. This is in a water tank. Oh, need something that isn't going to corrode. All right. Yeah. Another win. Find another one of those brass ones. There we go. Come on. Right now, on these long guys. Oh, clean the hole out. If I'd done the first one like that, we'd be over in home and hosed, but no, I didn't. I'm going to try and knock, try harder to knock that out. I think it needs to be supported under there with something. Uh, let me pause while I find a suitable something to support it, because I need to need to support it under there. So this is where my um, Accessory for the bandsaw comes into play so I can cut really short pieces. No. Certainly wouldn't have been able to do that without the attachment. Right. There you go. That's my tool for supporting that pop rivet. So let's get back to that job. Okay, so with this uh, little anvil that we just made, that'll sit underneath there. You can see that, sit under there and support that. So let's put this in the vise. Okay. 
All right, let's see if we can get this pop rivet thing knocked out. Yeah, that's come out the other side now. We can get that to we can get that stub out now. All right, so now I can drill the rivet from this side and get it out of the way. Got the head off. And I should be able to just push that through in the right size. Try, try a slightly larger pin punch. Now that's got it. Now that's stuck on there. We will get there. Right. All right, finally, now we're good. Now the question now is what to do about that. I think I'll put a, a rivet in there. Just thinking about the way the force is working here. So this is the pivot point. This gets pushed down, which tries to lift that up. So, because it's been going to be pushing down there, which is on the opposite side to the split side, I think we'll probably be all right. I'll just put a rivet in there. Back in there. Brass washer there this time. Right. I think this... This time when we pull the rivet up, we shouldn't have the same issue. Fingers crossed. No, I think that'll be fine. So, it's one side done. Rinse and repeat, as some people seem to say, to get the other side on. Okay, so much for the plastic glue. Um, see, it's already um, failed there. Whether you can see that moving. So it's going to be down to the repair plates. This is a, it is a specific product that's meant to do this. It comes with a primer that you uh, um, key the surfaces together with first, and then the, the it's a special sort of super glue, I guess. Anyway, it didn't work in this case. Uh, I was obviously right not to rely on it. So it's the other mending plate on and we will be able to rely on those, hopefully. So I could drill this, I said, jinx this one. I've drilled the hole a little bit close to the um, bottom of the plastic, so I have to doctor this washer up a bit, I guess. Oh, hooray, finally. All right, so after all that, it's very much fingers crossed. Looks like we got away with it. Whether you can see there where the washer is uh, truncated on that side. Well, that's the re completed repair. So, uh, looks alright. <laughs> Whether it will hold remains to be seen. 
So we'll go and put it in the cistern, see if it gets the job done. Okay, well, the light in here is of course appalling. I'm sure the sound quality is appalling as well. Let's see if we can get this beast back in. Start off by taking this out, myself half a chance. Well, what I wanted to see is that's how that's supposed to go. So I'll right, put that down there. And that's supposed to go under there. That comes up through there. Well, there we go. Always satisfying when you get a click like that, isn't it? Alright, so now then. Maybe we're in business. This cistern is uh, oh, at least 35 years old, so the plastic's quite old and hard. But let's turn the water on. Let's turn the water on and see what happens. All right, well at least the system fills and turns itself off. Let's try the half flush first. No, that seems to work alright. Mm -hmm. And the full flush. Looking good. So, full flush has worked. Um, I belatedly realised I should have gone and got a torch so you can actually see what's going on in there. But anyway, I'm not uh, redoing it just to do that. So, apologies for the poor lighting. But that will give you a look at how it is installed. And there's plenty of room for my um, uh, repair pieces, repair plates. So, lid on and we'll be done. Right. Okay, so that's all finished and hopefully good for another 30 years or until something else breaks. Uh, such is life. Well, thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.